editing technique that I like to use all the time when I am creating e-commerce images or even swapping out the background for styled studio images, but I want to keep that natural shadow. So we'll jump right in. I'll try to keep this a quick tutorial. I kind of like to ramble. So I've created this template so that you can refer back to it and just see the steps written out and you don't always have to jump into this video, but also this video will help if you run into any issues or you're confused. Um, so we are basically going to take this image here where we've got a nice natural shadow that is um, from some harsh light and we want to keep the shadow, but because it's going to be going on the website and Amazon, we want it to be pure white and Amazon requires a pure white background. So uh, we are going to remove the background, but keep that natural shadow because that is the brand stylistic choice. So we're going to go from this image here to this here where it is nice, bright, and there is pure white background, but also keep that awesome natural shadow. So first thing is first, I will create a copy of my background. I'm just going to call it background copy. And then I am going to create another layer underneath it. And this is going to be my white background. And then I am just going to grab my paint bucket tool and fill it with white. Another way you could do this would just go down here and add a solid color and pick white and click OK. And that is another way that you can do it. So we have our background copy and our white background. So the next step would be to cut out the product. And I have already gone in and cut this product out. I prefer the pen tool because that is the easiest for me. Um, and then I have this path here later, instead of trying to, you know, create a selection with the lasso tool and then trying to create a path based off of that, that's a little bit harder. Um, so we're just going to use the pen tool. So once you have your product all cut out and selected, um, you can just set, kind of set that aside for a second, because what we're going to move into is the channels tab. Now you're going to determine which channel has the most contrast between the shadows and your highlights or your white backdrop. So generally it is going to be your blue channel because your shadows are usually on the cooler side. Um, so what I'm going to do is click and drag that and copy that layer. Now, I, the reason that I click and drag it instead of just clicking command J is because if I command J, then it is going to just copy the copy that I already have. And I don't want that. So I am going to click and drag the blue channel down and copy that. And I am going to create a levels adjustment. And I do that by clicking command L and then the little levels adjustment window pops up. So we are now going to just create way more contrast between the highlights and shadows so that we can have a better selection. And so I am going to drag these around and try to get it so that these are contrasty. Now I don't want to go too far because you can kind of see that it starts to create some funky textures and I don't want that. So I'm going to get it where there's contrast, but it's not creating these like splotchy sections like you can see there. So there is going to be a little bit, but we're going to try to mitigate that as much as possible. So I think that is a pretty good selection. And once I have that with how contrasty I want, I'll just click OK. And then I'm going to select the darks. And by doing that, I am going to command click. And that is going to make a selection of the darkest colors. And when I do that, I have my background copy layer selected, and I am just going to create a mask. But then I am going to invert that mask by pressing command I. So I'm going to do that again, just so that you can understand. So right now I have my blue copy. We just added that levels adjustment. I'm going to command click that's selecting the darks, go back to my layers panel, create that mask, 
and then invert that mask so that I can see what has been selected. So now I have my background masked out, my product selected, but I still have some good dark gray stuff that gets not all the way selected. And so this is where we go into our paths. We want to select that product that we cut out. And now I can go in and fill the rest of the product so that it is 100% showing through my mask. And once I go back here, it is now fully showing. So you can see that the natural shadow is peeking through, but what I need to do is get rid of the rest of the background. It's not fully black. So I'm going to select my path and then I am going to shift command I to select the opposite. And I am going to brush black into my background here. And this is where it's kind of just painting and artistic choice, how you want to shape your mask. I am just going to go around and make sure that I am just painting where the mask should black out the background. And then you can see that I have a beautiful natural shadow and you know, it could be good to go, but some things that I like to do before finishing up, I obviously have not retouched this product, but what I'm going to do is create another layer of my product and my shadow separate. So I'm gonna separate both things so that I can manipulate them separately. So I went into my paths, I command click the product and I'm going to just duplicate my product so that it is on a layer all by itself. And now what I can do with that is I can manipulate the shadow and the product separately. So if I wanted to darken my shadow, I could add a levels or a curves adjustment layer and darken the shadow or lighten it, whatever you'd prefer. And it's only affecting the shadow. If it were on top here, then I would be affecting both my shadow and my product. But here I can separate them out. And then on my product, I can you know, make the adjustments that I need separately and also clip that just to the product. So now when I make these adjustments, it's not affecting the shadow. And so I do it that way so that I have full control over what I am editing, but I have that beautiful looking shadow and it's not digitally created. That is how I edit my natural shadows. And if you found this video helpful, I would appreciate if you liked and subscribed and I will see you in the next one.